Hi everyone, I make Excel and PowerPoint templates to help you get ahead in your career and get the most out of your organization or your business. This one in particular is the Business Model Canvas, which is just such a great tool. We use it to see if we should invest in a business, invest in a startup, you know, is it worthwhile putting our money and time to do this thing, to start up this company, to start up this product? It's so great and you're going to love it. Let's get into the sheet. Of course, the first thing that we are going to do is just to tidy up, uh, is to just do the general framing and general coloring of our sheet. And we might speed this up ever so slightly as we figure this out so that we can get into the actual business model canvas itself. These two sections, we're just going to color white so that they stand out and for uh, that way, it, we're, people are gonna realize that they can fill in these sections and we're just going to give them a little border as well. Let's just indent it ever so slightly from the edge and that way that's going to look really, really nice. Now we can do the general borders for our, for the business model canvas itself. And we're starting with, we've got our titles up the top and we'll, we'll just put thick borders around all of these just to, so that we know exactly what we are working with. We'll put thick borders around the individual sections as well. And now things are really starting to come together. But we're also going to add a few little tricks here and it comes mostly in the form of symbols. So what we're first going to do is just say insert uh, symbol over the right hand side here. And we're going to search for a SIGO UI symbol. I hope that's the right way to pronounce it. But in that we should find both an arrow and a circle. And those are the two things that we're going to use which are really, really fun. Here's the circle here. So we're going to insert that. And here is a wonderful triangle. And this triangle is going to be the basis uh, for a lot of the stuff that we do in here as well. And it's going to look really fantastic. So as you can see, they've been input. Now we can take that circle and we can copy that all the way across with our circle up the top in the headings and our triangle just over here. And we're going to use that for the explanation for each of these business model canvas sections. So the first thing we start with is our customer segments. And this one we say, for whom are we creating value? And what are the customer segments or groups who would pay for our, for our product or service? Next, we're going to copy that across and we actually want to look at the value proposition. For the value proposition, we're asking, what is the value we deliver to our customer? What customer problems are we solving? What is the customer need that we're addressing? And what is our promise to the customer? So what is our value proposition? What are the products and services that we create for our customer? Now we can merge and center the, the rest of this. Actually, we'll put it to the left and just indent it a little bit. And now we've got our value proposition and we've got a place where we can answer that very easily. We'll do it the same for customer segments, just merge and center or put that to the left and indent it ever so slightly from the left. Next, we want to copy this across and we'll just copy this down. We'll right click format cells and make sure that they are all merged as well. But the next one we're asking is our value proposition. So how do our customers pay or reward us for the value that we bring them when we're selling them something or providing a service? How are they going to pay it? What's the revenue model? Is it a monthly subscription? Is it a one-off fee? And are there different revenue models as well? So are there different ones that we can look at um, or utilize in this startup or this product or this business? And of course, we can just merge these ones, put them to the top and put them to the left and indent them a little bit. And now that one is ready to go as well. Our next one are the channels that we'll be operating in. And for the channels, what we ask is how does our value proposition reach our customer? How do we deliver it to our customer? Or how do they pick it up from us? Where do they get it from? Where can our customer buy or use our products and services? Once we know that, then we want to ask about our customer relationships. And for this one, what we're asking is what relationship does each customer se segment expect us to maintain? Is it a casual relationship or is it, you know, does it, does, do they just buy on a once off basis? Um, do they need very little interaction or do they need a lot of hand holding in order to buy from us? The, is there a long sales process? What is the relationship we need with our customers? Once we've asked that, then we can go into the key activities that we will be doing. And for the key activities, what we're asking is, what are the activities that we perform every day in order to create and deliver that value to the customer? How do we create our product? How do we create our service? Uh, what are those key activities? What is the process for creating that value and delivering that value to our customer. How are we going to do it? Once we know the process or the how, then we can start, uh, start 
start asking the key resources. What are the key resources that we are going to need? What resources do we need to deliver and create uh, that process for, on a daily basis to create those things for our value proposition to deliver that to the customer? Now we're up to the last two that we ask as well, and the, the last two are our key partners. For our key partners, what we're asking is, which key resource do we acquire from a third party or a partner? Are we relying on someone to help us to create this value? And maybe there's a risk there. Uh, what key activities do our partners perform? And who are our most important partners? Do we really need to engage them? Do we need to uh, you know, have contracts around that? Do we need to have relationships around that? Um, is that going to be really important to our business going forward and we can't afford to lose it? for example. Last but not least, now we're looking at the cost structure and we'll just merge that cell so that it is nice, maybe increase the indent ever so slightly. And for the cost structure, what we're asking is what are the costs of creating and delivering this value? So now we're starting to get a really clear picture and we'll just merge this and make this nice a little bit as well. And with our view, we can uncheck the grid lines so that there are no grid lines left. And now this is looking really, really nice. But after we've gone through this entire process for, with our team, with our startup team or with our product team, now we have all of these beautiful answers to all of these beautiful questions. And we've got a really good idea of whether our product has a lot of risk around it, whether it's going to succeed, uh, and you know, or how much it's going to succeed by. It's a much clearer view of the future and a wonderful way to get started in your business or your product or a new item in your organization. I hope you have enjoyed creating this with me because I've had an absolute blast. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.